Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in all you beautiful people. Welcome to the Fab Film House this wonderful evening. Welcome into my kitchen. We are going to be making some espresso coffee cookies tonight. Um, I tried these for the first time this week. Uh, I don't like coffee or drink it, but everyone else in my household does. And they said these cookies are absolutely wonderful. So I thought, Ben's they like them so much and love the coffee taste that I would share these with you guys and show you how to make these cookies. And uh, maybe you will enjoy them if you're a coffee drinker. So let's come on into the kitchen here and let's get started on some cookies. Welcome in everyone. Yo, B24 Gaming, Barry, 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 uh, 12 months with the Fab Fam. Thank you, sir. We are glad to have you as part of our family and glad we found you along our journey in life. Welcome in tonight. Hello, Mick and Thor. I hope you're having a wonderful evening. Uh, welcome in this evening. So, guys, we're going to get started here. Now, what we're going to do, I'm going to move this out of the way, is you have to mix this in parts. You want to mix up your flour mixture first, and then you want to work on the, the mixture with the eggs and stuff. So, we're going to start with this first. So, let me reach over here and get my flour. Alrighty, let's see. One and a half cups of flour. So let's measure this out here. Hope everyone has had a wonderful Wednesday. It just decided to rain this evening here a little bit. There's one cup of flour. And it says a half. So I'm going to measure a half in here. So there's a half. Now I will tell you these get kind of tough to stir. Hopefully I'll make it. Last time I had to get Jeffro to finish stirring them. Once you start adding everything, they're so tough to stir. So I'm going to mix in a one and a half cup of flour. And then we're going to add in our cocoa powder. And we need three-fourths cup of cocoa powder. I have my cocoa powder here. So uh, let me get three-fourths of a cup here. Okay, three-fourths a cup of cocoa powder. Alrighty, and we need salt in here, which is a half a teaspoon, just a half. That helps with the, because uh, it's all-purpose flour, and that helps with the rising process of the cookie. So please don't leave the flour out. It's only a half a teaspoon. It'll mess up the recipe. <clears throat> and uh, baking soda. We need a three-fourths teaspoon of baking soda. Let's see here. Okay. Three-fourths of a teaspoon. I don't think it gives you energy because it doesn't really have coffee itself in it. Like, you don't have to brew it to put in this like you would a some other recipe. This is just um, the what we're going to use in a minute, Thor, is you can find these from Toll House. They're espresso chips. They're morsels made with real coffee. And I don't think it's enough to really affect uh, your, like, energy level. Okay, so now let's mix all this together, our flour mixture. Let's get this incorporated here. <clears throat> it's just our powders. We want to mix them up before we add them to the liquids in a minute. Just try to get the flour and the cocoa stirred good together is all you're trying to do. So it's mixed well when you start adding it in. 
And we need to preheat our oven to 325 degrees, which I've already done. And you're going to, I use like a, either a parchment paper or this is a cookie um, sheet thing that you can put on here. And I do that also. Uh, you can put your cookies on there. So I use that, just one or the other. Now let's set that aside. <clears throat> now, let me get my other bowl. Now this is our big bowl we're going to mix in here. Let me move my eggs. And in this bowl, let's see, we're going to put our sugar. We need two and a fourth cup of granulated sugar, which I use pure cane sugar. So I got my pure cane sugar here. One and two. You'll notice it looks a little darker in color. That's because it's pure cane. That is perfectly fine. It measures the same equivalent as regular sugar. Yo, rough toilet paper, what's up? Anything goes with Mercy Meatloaf, according to Jeffro. Okay, and now I'm going to break three large eggs into this. So here are my eggs. One, two, and three. All right, now let's see, we got my sugar, my eggs, and now I need to put in my vanilla extract. And we're gonna do a teaspoon of vanilla. And as you know, I like the Watkins Clear Vanilla. I've shared that with you guys before, so I'm gonna use that. So there's my teaspoon of vanilla. <clears throat> now, I'm going to start stirring this together. Now, there's my little sugar and egg mixture and my vanilla stirred up, okay? Uh, now, let's see. Now, I'm going to add my chocolate mixture. So, let me talk about this. Before you prepare these cookies, you need to get out a double boiler if you have one, okay? And in your double boiler, you want to put a stick and a half of butter and a cup of semi-sweet morsels, okay? And you want to melt those together and it's gonna look like this when it's all melted, okay? The butter and the morsels is just a cup and a, a cup of morsels and a stick and a half of butter, unsalted butter. Then you wanna pull this top part off of your double boiler and set it to the side until this is completely room temperature, okay? You want this to be cool. Now we're going to pour this into here. This is our chocolate mixture. It is completely cool at this point because I pre-melted it so it'd be cool for stream. All right, let me pull this to the side. Now we're gonna mix this in with our egg and sugar mixture. <clears throat> 
Now, the consistency I figured out when I made these the other night, just so you know, the consistency of these cookies remind me of, this, of a texture of a brownie in a way. Because you don't have oil in these cookies, and you don't have softened butter like we're used to in chocolate chips, because your butter is going in here in the form of being melted with your chocolate and then I think the oil from the butter being melted serves as the oil per se for um, the cookie itself. All right so now I've put the chocolate mixture into that okay. Now we're going to start adding the flour mixture uh, which <clears throat> this is when to me it gets to start getting a little tough because it starts getting a little harder to stir and the other night I got Jeff Rowe to help me but um, just pour about half of it in and stir that first and then you're going to pour the other half so I'm going to start stirring this up and be kind of slow at first or you'll be like me the other night and I was slinging cocoa everywhere and flour But I think it's because it is like a brownie mixture is why it's more tough to stir. Okay, already hurting my hand. And then I'm going to pour the rest. Let me set this to my side here. Give me just a second. Okay, so I'm going to swap this to this thing that I used <laughs> to dip out stuff because it's a little firmer than a spatula. I went and got it, and I'm going to see if I can stir it with this, okay? We're going to give it a try. <clears throat> It's like a, <clears throat> almost reminds me of this huge batch of brownies in a way. <laughs> Even Jeffro had a hard time the other day. He was like, oh my gosh, can't you put this in your huge mixer? And I said, no, you can't put this in a mixer. It would make a mess and stick to the thing and not work right. Oh my gosh oh give me just a second my hand is killing me you know what I thought about that the other night rough but I'm afraid it would just stick everywhere it was so much easier just to ask my husband rough I have to like hug the bowl jeez Okay, now let me see if I can scrape this. Alrighty. Now here comes the fun part. We have this mixed up, okay? And now we're going to add our espresso chips.
Hey, Adam, how's it going? So for this recipe, you want to get, it's, you should be able to find this at your grocery store. I got this at my Kroger, but I've been told somebody found these at their Walmart. Um, if you have a Publix, you might want to check there, but it's just a normal bag. It's nine ounces of espresso chips from Toll House. That's what I'm going to use in this. And you're going to use the whole bag. Okay, let me see. I'm going to have to get some scissors. Okay, scissors, scissors. My kitchen shears here. I wonder if my husband can sharpen these. <laughs> Not sure. They're getting dull. Okay. We're going to pour all of these into here. Okay. And we're going to stir these up and then we're going to drop them onto the cookie sheet and we're going to cook them for about 11 minutes. Depends on your oven. The recipe says 8 to 10 minutes. I found that they were still raw at that point. So I did 11 for my oven and it worked perfect. And you can smell these chips. They smell just like espresso coffee. So if you do not like coffee, you will not like this cookie. I don't like this cookie because I hate coffee. But it was something new I tried. It'll probably be something I make uh, Christmas things uh, to give to people. For Christmas time, we make little goodie boxes. Um, and it has... Uh, cookies and such in it this would probably be something I might make to add to that because a lot of people I know love coffee okay so now we're gonna scrape this off <clears throat> let me set this over here now moving some of my stuff out of my way here now we're going to get I have a cookie scoop and it's just a simple little cookie scoop you can get at a cooking store or order online now it's completely up to you on what size of these cookies you want to be you can make these cookies ginormous or you can make them small I made some big ones the other night and I made some regular ones okay if you want to make a regular one then you take your scoop and you scoop into here and you level it on the side of your bowl like this until it's almost even just a little bit and that's going to make a regular size cookie <laughs> Barry that's so funny so that's a normal cookie what I'd like to do is just scoop it down in here let it be a little bit sloppy over the edge and that's the size right there I made the other night so I'm putting two to the row here. And it's going to fit six cookies on here. Okay. Now we're going to turn around and... We're going to put these in the oven. And I'm going to put this on 11 minutes and we're going to see what it looks like at 11 minutes. So let me put these on 11 minutes and I just started the timer. And I'm going to move this out of the way, okay? Now... While those cookies are cooking, I just want to give y'all another idea. It wasn't something that would take very long to show on stream. So I thought I would add it with the cookies. I'm going to show you what I made for dinner and just kind of tell you how to do it. And it's something simple. Um, if you're like a school teacher, you go work in the office. Um, crock, a crock pot could be your friend, okay? Um, I grew up where me and my mom, my mom was a cake decorator and I worked with my mom uh, doing cake decorating. And my mom, uh, when we would work on the weekends or something, she would put something in the crock pot for the family. And in the evening when we come home, we would just either 
add a little something to it or whatever. Well, this was a, a thing we used to make in the crock pot. I'm sure some of you have. But um, let me get my crock pot and let me show you something, okay? So this right here is roast carrots and potatoes, okay? And I just want to give you a lowdown on how I do it, just to give you an idea. Now, I'm all about, it's just a personal preference, but I'm all about farm-raised meat and stuff like that. I, I prefer to buy it from a local farmer here versus getting meat from my grocery. So I know how he fed his animals, how it was processed, and what they didn't have. I, I'd like to do that with my vegetables, and I get organic stuff, you know, for the most part. So it's completely up to you, but I will tell you, if you ever experience fresh meat as far as going to a local meat person if you do have someone this guy sits up at our farmer's market and I knew him personally too his farm is near our farm and he processes I can't even tell you how many cows a year and sells the meat this roast is more tender than a roast you'll ever get at your grocery store so I get because there's four of us a roast cooks down just so y'all know a roast will cook down so I get two small roasts they look about like this big when you get them oh let me see here they look about, I don't know if you can see my hands, there we go, about that big when I get them, but they literally cook down to that size. So I get two of them, okay? And what I'll start out doing is I will, the night before, so last night, I put two roasts in here, and I put this on low, and I covered them with water, okay? And I put minced onion on them. You can get it dried minced onion, garlic powder, and some pepper on them. And I let them cook on low all night long, okay? Then, today around noon, I came to this. And this is what I do just because I don't want all the fat and stuff. You don't have to do it this way. My mom used to just throw it all in there, but I don't like doing that. So then what you do is you come in here, you take your lid off, and your roast is going to be in here. I sit there and get a big old plate. I have like a big, huge plate. And I remove all my roast onto the plate, okay? Where there's nothing left but water liquid in here. And you will notice that it'll have a film on it. It's because it cooked off the grease or anything that's in a roast, okay? I pour all that out. You can scoop it out with a scoop, whatever. I poured it all out. So there's nothing in here, okay? Then... I go and get some little carrots. Uh, let me see if I can find one in here. See? Uh, just some tiny little carrots. Let me see. Let me drip this. Just little carrots, okay? Tiny little organic carrots I have. And I line the bottom of this crock pot with these little carrots, okay? There's no liquid in it at this point. Nothing's in it because I've removed it. Then I get some just regular potatoes from my grocery store. And I peel them, and I chop them up into sizes, and I put the little potatoes on top of the carrots, okay? Then, you start adding your roast back on top of the carrots and the potatoes that I pulled out. And if there's any fat that you notice on the roast, this one side of the roast, one of the roast had like a skim of fat, I pull it off. So there's no fat on the roast. Then you put that back on there. And you can buy, you, if you don't have it, you can use water back on this. But if you know how you get chicken broth or chicken stock, get beef broth or beef stock and cover this back with some beef broth or stock, okay? And then I'll finish it off by adding a few more potatoes. Then I'll put some pepper back in here for seasoning, a little bit of garlic and onion, just a little bit. I put the lid back on it around 11 or 12 and let it cook the rest of the day on low. You may notice that your potatoes aren't trying to cook fast enough for carrots. You can turn it up on high and you can let it cook longer if you like. But then by the end of the day, um, 
your roast and carrots are ready to eat for dinner. Now, with me working from home, as you well know, I can do the process where I pulled it all out, drained it, or whatever. Well, growing up, my mom, you know, not working from home a lot of times, or my grandma, what they would do is when they put it all in, they'd put the raw meat, the carrots, the potatoes, that's what most people in the South do, and they put it all in there, it cooks all day, so when you get home, it's all done together, and you eat it. I just found growing up, I didn't like seeing that fat in the water and no one that was fat on the meat and all that. So I decided ages ago to kind of do my own thing with this. And that's how I do it. Um, just so it cleans it all up and it cooks. And when you, after you drain it and add that beef broth, it helps with flavoring everything too. So if you happen to be working from home or something and can do that process, it works really well. Or you could do this on the weekend and do it that way. And then you just keep letting it cook. And you want to make sure your potatoes and your carrots are tender. And there you go. That's going to be our dinner tonight is roast carrots and potatoes. Um, it's really good. Of course, when you pull it out, you may want to season it with some more pepper or something like that. Like, I'm a ketchup freak, so I end up di dipping my roast in, in ketchup, yes. So, <laughs> it's up to you. I know my family likes A1 um, on theirs. So, I mean, you can do whatever. But it's an easy meal. So that's what we're having tonight. And I thought I would share that with you while our cookies are finishing up. Um, just as an idea of something you might want to try out if you never have. I think you'll really enjoy it. So let me put this back over here so I can plug it back up. <laughs> Adam, everyone wants to uh, me to do, adopt them. They think Jeffro and I should adopt them, even though they're probably older than us or they're our age. So <clears throat> you could be added to the list. Uh, it's kind of funny because everybody's like, "What? Are, when are you cooking? I'm coming over." So it's just kind of funny. Everybody, uh, one of our mods, she's like, "Man, if I live closer to you, um, you know, it would be cool." And I said, "Yeah," and I can too. Adam, I just got finished canning homemade salsa from Fresh Tomatoes. So I made salsa and stuff, and I make our pickles and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and I said, yeah, and I could cook for you, too. She's like, oh, I'd want to eat there every night, though. It was funny. <laughs> but um, anyways, so these cookies have two minutes on the dot left. Now, these cookies get really soft. I'll show you what's left from my experimental testing the other night. I put it in a bag. And as you can see, you might be able to see, these things crumbled into a million pieces in this bag because they were so soft. So I may put them up in a container this time instead of in a big Ziploc bag because I'm afraid it might do that again. So, and as I said, most of you know I'm a cake, do cake decorating on the side. So I have this cooling sheet this big one that i cool my cakes on i like to use it for my cookies too okay and this is the flipper i need a new one it's starting to split but i use for my grill grilling burgers it works good for these cookies too so i'm going to lay that there and we are about to get these out let me move this over so i can get Something to set these on and show you guys what these look like.
Yeah, Jeffro be eating good too. I guess you know that. Jeffro, that's a mod in here. Jeffro Boating, that's my husband. Uh, so yeah, he be eating good too. He's he's always uh, torturing me usually during the cooking stream, and he's trying to taste test while I'm cooking. So I'm surprised he hasn't run in here to try to get a cookie, but. And we are revamping our channel points, too. So, um, we're going to have some fun cooking uh, cooking stream ones, too. I don't want to tell you what they are, but we are working on some fun cookie uh, cooking ones that we're going to add, too. All right. So, here are our cookies. Now, what you're supposed to do when you make cookies, because especially if you're doing them like for a bakery or something you want these to cool just a little bit on the cookie sheet before you move them to the actual cooling rack so they don't uh you know deform I guess So normally you leave them on here, okay? So that way they scoop off just the perfect form and then you put them on there. But I'm not going to do that right now <laughs> because my, my family doesn't care what they look like. So I'm just going to scoop them off so I can show you guys. See? Because you have to push against and see what I'm talking about. This actually might be too messy for this style. I actually might have to wait just a second. Yep. Because these are our gooey our cookie. So let me just let them cool for just a second. So I don't make a pile of mess. That's why I did 11 minutes on these too. Because I noticed the 8 to 10 it says is not long enough. These are a really gooey cookie. I also made some chocolate chips. I tried some different chocolate chips the other night. And thanks, Cilantro was telling y'all that um, I was cooking them at 3 a.m. because I was not sleepy. So I made some jumbo chocolate chip cookies the other night. Um, so I made those to test out some stuff, too. So I made those the other night. A lot of times, uh, as many of you know, I live on a farm. And uh, my dad lives on the farm next door, and so does my sister. She lives next door, too. So I always share my stuff, too, so we don't have too much. So <laughs> my dad always likes that. When my mom was alive, she loved it, too, because, um, you know, I'd always be like, here, Mom, I have this left over. And then she would be like, good, I don't have to cook for your daddy tonight. <laughs> so um, that was always nice. So now I just share with my sister and my dad because my sister moved back home uh, from Florida. So we have her back home now, too. So I share with them a lot. So uh, <laughs> they like it when I experiment. Like, I, I didn't even think the other night when I made chicken and dumplings on stream. That's my dad's favorite. And he hasn't had homemade ones in ages because I don't think my sister makes them. So, anyway, I should have took him some chicken and dumplings, and I didn't. So, I'll have to make them again because they turned out so good, too. Um, and I really think my dad would have liked them. Because they were it was my grandma's recipe, which was his mother. And he loved his mom's chicken and dumplings. really wish these would scoop off easy <laughs> let's see if I can try another one I don't know if they're ready yet that's the bad thing about these I did find out haha -ha. there we go is you do have to let these cool just a little while longer than you would a regular cookie or it crashes and burns like the one you can't see And these, I, were t I was told, because like I said, I don't eat these because I don't like coffee, but I was told these are really good hot, too. So once they come straight out of the oven like this, they're really good. Uh-oh. I think I broke one. Okay. And now I'm going to put some more on here. Ew. 
Does anybody know if Grand is live already? Oh, my husband's live on there with him. Okay. Okay, got you. Cool, because I'm going to raid him, guys, whenever I get done. All right. So, we're going to put these in the oven. <clears throat> and I'm going to cook these on 11 minutes again. You may want to do 12, depending on your oven, like I said. And uh, here we go. That was the crash and burn cookie, see? Crash and burn. But that is what the cookies look like when they're done. They have, uh, let me see here. They have, uh, they're very soft, and as you can see, they remind you of a brownie. So that is what they look like. Um, and as they cool, they turn a little bit darker color, I noticed. But the the cookie itself is chocolate. I was told uh, that's what they, you can taste it, my husband told me. And then he said the espresso chips definitely taste like coffee and add to that. So it's like coffee and chocolate. So if you like coffee, give these a try. Um, <clears throat> I will post the recipe. I still need to put the chicken and dumplings in the Discord and recipes. Um, so check that out and, um, yes, they do, don't they? And uh, I'm going to rate grand and I appreciate you guys coming and joining me and don't forget to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow is challenge day. Cilantro will be streaming tomorrow and you guys can work on some challenges and then I'm going to, um, uh, probably join the queue and play with them some tomorrow too. And then Friday is my day to stream. And so I'm not sure what we're going to do Friday evening. We might actually play some Fortnite and play with viewers. Um, so you might want to come and join me then. Um, but I hope everyone has a great Thursday. Let me see if I can. I hate always typing this on this laptop. It is not working. Ah! Hold on, guys. I'm so sorry. It is not letting me raid. Can you do it from your phone, Cilantro? If you can do it, please do it. It's not letting me do it. I forward slash raid, and it is not letting me do it. Thank you, Cilantro. All right, guys. Please, please come see us tomorrow. I appreciate you guys for hanging out with me.